Hey, what's up, guys? Today, I'll show you a supernatural horror film, Dab, Curse of the Jinn. Spoilers ahead, watch out and take care. In 1986, Kibbledeer Village was struck by a series of deaths and diseases. Fast forward to the present, Ebru investigates with her camera. She witnesses a famous shaman perform an exorcism. The possessed woman is surrounded by her neighbors and relatives. Shaman tells the jinn inside her to leave, but the jinn resists. Shaman drops a stub of paper into the basin before him and covers it with a cloth. He then removes the cloth, revealing that the basin's water has turned into blood. The woman goes on a rampage and leaves. He follows her into a nearby house. Shaman approaches and covers her with a veil. He then pulls out a weird mass of blood, flesh, and hair from her mouth. They return to the villagers, and Shaman tells them that the jinn has been exorcised. The next day, Ebru goes to Shaman's house. Shaman tells her the possessed woman suddenly started displaying weird behavior. She took medicine, but this did not help her. Ebru alleges Shaman of setting up the entire exorcism, suggesting that he is a fraud. Shaman brings Ebru to a dusty room and shows her the weird mass from the possessed woman last night. Ebru argues that it proves nothing, since Shaman could have put it inside her mouth when he covered her with the veil. Shaman replies that it needs to be dark for jinns to leave the body. Ebru tells him she will choose his next patient for him to ensure that he's legitimate. They return to the house, and Shaman shows Ebru his collection of ancient texts and charts. Shaman tries to convince her that jinns are real, but Ebru does not yield. Before Ebru leaves, she gives Shaman his next patient's files. The next patient is Kubra, Ebru's childhood friend, who is suffering from an unknown malady. The next day, they head to Kubra's house in the old village. They soon get lost when Ebru misses a turn. Ebru calls Kubra's mother for directions. They also ask a nearby house for directions. When they tell the men that they are going to investigate Kibbledeer village, the men get angry and force them out. They continue driving and reach a valley, where Shaman says demons and jinns are supposed to live. They suddenly hear a woman crying. They investigate and find two red eyes in the darkness. A few moments later, the beast with red eyes charges toward them. They are startled, but manage to return to the car. They later find a strange circle on the ground made with bones. Beside the circle is a wishing tree, from which animal organs, dolls, and bloody cloth are hanging. They find the number 7175 carved into the tree. Shaman guesses that this is a tree used to wish evil upon someone. They meet a shepherd on the road and ask him for directions. He points them to the direction of the village and they go on their way. They are later confused upon seeing the same shepherd in the fields with a black and hooded figure since they passed him a few miles ago. They arrive at Kubra's house and Embru is reunited with her childhood friend's mother and sister. Kubra's Anna Peters and gets angry at Embru for filming. They argue that they are here to help, but the ant does not believe her. Because Kumbra is still sleeping, Embru and Shaman go down to the village. They meet the mayor of the village, who tells them that Kumbra is possessed by a jinn and that the village is cursed. Before he can continue, he gets stopped by a man, who angrily tells them to stop filming and leave. They return to the house and have dinner. After dinner, the sister shows them a video taken on the night of Kumbra's wedding party. In it, Kumbra and her husband are surrounded by family and friends. Kumbra suddenly starts feeling sick. She abruptly walks out of the room and returns shortly after with a knife. She then stabbed her husband and terrorizes the other guests before returning to stab and slash her dead husband on the floor. The recording ends and Shaman tells them that Kumbra was speaking in Aramaic, the language of the Evalis demons. They translate Kumbra's speech and find out she said the number 7175, the code on the tree earlier. They learn Kumbra once sleep walked to the wishing tree in the middle of the night. Shaman goes outside to look at something. While outside, they see Kumbra watching ominously from the windows. They go to Kumbra's room, and Shaman questions her. Kumbra does not remember much from the day of the party. However, she reveals that she was dreaming about herself inside a coffin when she sleepwalked to the wishing tree. In the dream, she gets strangled to death but is later reborn as a baby with no mouth and an eye on its forehead. They look through items from the party and learn that Kumbra's father died from a sudden seizure the day Kumbra was born. They return to the living room. Shaman then throws away the evil eye beads around the house since they are a source of strength for demons. Shaman immediately prepares for an exorcism. He tells Embru that everyone possessed by a jinn dreams about the same one-eyed baby. They enter Kupper's room and Shaman starts the exorcism. They turn off the lights. Shaman pours oil on Kupper's palms and tells her to rub her palms together and smell them. The house and the camera suddenly start shaking. Kumpra frantically shakes away the oil on her hands, before turning to Embru and showing the wounds on her back. 
Cumbra suddenly becomes scared and tells them the Jin has come. Her nose bleeds and she sits on the floor. When Shaman covers her with a cloth and starts praying, she stops moving. When Shaman puts his hand under the cloth, it gets pulled in. He pulls it out and reveals a carving made by Cumbra on his palm. They leave and Shaman consults an ancient book where he finds out the carving means mirror. He tells them when a jinn possesses a young girl, it sends a message saying mirror. He confirms that a very dangerous jinn is possessing Cumbra. He tells them to prepare an empty room with mirrors and candles. Embru asks Shaman why it didn't work by covering Cumbra with a veil and praying over her. He tells her that the jinn inside Cumbra will not leave her body until it dies or kills her. Before the exorcism, Ebru notes that Cumper shows signs of a schizophrenic personality type disorder. While she talks on camera, Cumper stares at her from upstairs. Cumper wakes up in the middle of the night. She stands up and faces a large mirror. Her reflection in the mirror moves, but the real Cumper's movement is different. The real Cumper throws her head back, while the reflection stays still. The camera and the mirror start shaking. Cumper walks out of the room. However, the Cumpra in the mirror is on the bed and has returned to sleeping, indicating that the jinn has taken over her body. The door to Shaman's room swings open and a strong wind blows in. Cumpra is seen standing ominously over her family members. She turns to the camera but quickly leaves the room. The next morning, Embru coughs out a strange blood-covered item and Shaman quickly takes it from her. That night, Shaman and Embru enter the room with mirrors. Shaman starts the ritual and faces the mirror. He lays down a mound of salt beside the mirrors. He fills the room with incense, while Embru inspects the mirror to make sure that nothing is staged. Shaman goes under a veil, and Embru hands him a camera. He calls out the jinn behind the mirrors. The veil is suddenly pulled away from him. He tells Embru that the jinn is behind her. Shaman stops her when she turns around to look. When Shaman asks the jinn what it wants from Cubra, the candles in the mirror burn brighter. The candles suddenly die, and the mirror shatters. The family hears the noise and enters. They notice the salt placed beside the mirror has been used to draw a symbol. Shaman learns it is something called the toilet spell or the death spell. Shaman rushes to the toilet and breaks it open with a pickaxe. He finds blood-covered witchcraft items, including voodoo dolls, animal organs, and a cow head inside. Ebru gives a situation update to the camera. She notes that other people besides Shaman might be involved in the scam. Meanwhile, Shaman goes through the witchcraft items. He cuts them open and finds a human-shaped chart with Cumper's mother and father's names on it. It is a curse upon the fetus, which will cause its father to die after its birth and be possessed by evil jinns 14 days after its 23rd birthday. Suddenly, Cumper suddenly runs at them, screaming that the jinn is butchering her flesh. Ebru wants to take her to a hospital, but Shaman convinces her to let him finish the exorcism. They bring Cumper to a barn to attempt the second exorcism. Shaman starts the exorcism and asks Cumbra if the jinn is in the room. Cumbra points out its location and describes her as a long-haired woman named Sare. Shaman threatens to kill Sare. Through Cumbra, Sare tells Shaman she's not afraid of any god. Shaman burns the fetus curse chart, causing Sare to go wild in violence, not hormones. She jumps up into the rafters and goes back down. She then screams as the lights in the barn go on and off. After the chaos, Cumbra falls to her knees and coughs up blood. Shaman tells them that Cumbra is saved. They return to the house, and Ebru notes Cumbra's blood pressure and pulse have returned to normal. Her nausea and fever have vanished too. Shaman tells Ebru that someone close to the family cast the spell. He tells her about Dab, the apocalypse mentioned in the Quran, that will cover the world like a web and enter every home. Shaman suspects that the invention of internet, where people can learn about all kinds of spells at the click of a button, is this apocalypse. But Ebru still doesn't believe his smelly bullshit. That night, the camera in Cumper's room is knocked down. Cumper acts as if being possessed. She takes the camera and retrieves the knife and red dress from her wedding night. She sets the camera down, floats down in front of it, then returns to the house. She then stabs her aunt repeatedly in the face. Everyone rushes downstairs. They find the aunt bloody on the floor and call an ambulance. Cumper's sister remembers that Cumper goes to the wishing tree when she disappears in the middle of the night. They head to the tree, only to find Cumbra standing inside the ritual circle. The demon Sare speaks through Cumbra, telling them she will never die and Cumbra's body will be hers. Shaman pulls Cumbra out of the circle, and Ebru brings her to the doctor. Because of the failed exorcism, she calls Shaman a fraud and leaves him there. Shaman returns to the house the next day and finds the bandaged ant there. She tells Shaman that Cumbra's father tried to strangle Cumbra when she was just a baby, calling her the child of the devil. 
But luckily, the ant saved the baby Kumpra and pushed the father away. Just then, black foam came out of his mouth, and he choked to death. While he was dying, he uttered Sare's name. It's revealed that Kumpra's father became rich with the help of a djinn. Back to the present, the ant refers Shaman to Mr. Noel, a man who can tell her about the village past. Shaman tries to understand the 71-7-5 code. He returns to the wishing tree, but is attacked by a snake. He runs to the road and sees Ebru who apologizes to him. He tells her he must go to Kibbledeer village and meet Mr. Noel. They soon arrive at Kibbledeer village and find 71 7 to 5 carved into random places. While looking around, the car is mysteriously covered by bloody handprints. They eventually find Mr. Noel and are surprised to find out he was actually the shepherd from earlier. He tells them that 24 years ago, Kumper's father and Ebru's father asked a djinn named Sare to help them look for treasure. After finding the treasure, they killed Sare and buried her by the wishing tree. As revenge, members of Sare's clan killed the two men. These djinns also plan to resurrect Sare, using Kumper's body. Once Kumper reaches Sare's age, they will take her body and bring Sare into their world. Mr. Noal shows them pictures of deformed babies with eyes on their foreheads and dead livestock. After their fathers sold the gold, the babies in the village were born with defects, pushing the villagers to go crazy or commit suicide. Mr. Noel reveals that his gin wife told him about all this. The lights flicker, as Shaman asks Mr. Noel's gin wife for help. He also finds Mr. Noel's deformed baby underneath a blanket. Mr. Noel sends them away, as Sare's clan will harm them if they help them. But Mr. Noel also reveals that the gin haunting Cumbra is not Sare. The jinns apparently keep repeating Sare's name, because they want Cumbra to reincarnate into Sare. They leave the house and find the bloody handprints. They are attacked by invisible forces, but manage to drive away. Shaman learns that in order to lift the curse, they need to dig up Sare's body, wrap it in a blessed shroud, and bury it elsewhere. They return to the tree and dig up the grave. Shaman finds a burial jar and wraps it with the shroud before burying it. He returns to Ebru after burying it, but the camera suddenly starts shaking. Shaman approaches an ancient building and speaks into it, saying that he has returned Sare's dead body back to them. Shaman tells Ebru that it's all over. They return to Kupra's house with the good news. However, Kupra's mother appears and tells Shaman Mr. Noel has called him over. Shaman leaves, but she asks Ebru to stay with her daughter. While in her room, Ebru finds a cursed chart in her bra, containing a picture of herself and Kupra. Meanwhile, Shaman receives new information on 71-7-5 from his colleague. He translates the numbers into Arabic, revealing the letters vivo, which means I am alive, in Latin. He learns that jinns that are buried alive let other jinns know that they are alive using the 71 7 to 5 code. Shaman finally understands that Sare was not killed. She was only buried alive and remains alive to this day. He also discovers that unearthing a living jinn will only make the curse worse. A bloody Mr. Know All suddenly appears like Mr. Bloody All. He tells Shaman that the evil jinns have killed his wife. It's also revealed that Kumpra's mother and sister are plotting to give Ebru's body to Stare instead of Kumpra's. Apparently, Shaman was tricked. The jinns lift Mr. Noel into the air, and Shaman is left surrounded by the jinns and snakes. He manages to run back to the car and drive away. Back in the house, Ebru enters Kumper's room. Kumper faces her, revealing her disfigured face. Kumper's family suddenly enters the room and holds Ebru down. Shortly after, Shaman returns to the house. He finds the ant dead with a snake on top of her. He enters Kupper's room and finds the bed filled with evil eye beads and the chart that Ebru found in her bra. He runs to the wish tree, but is attacked by a djinn and thrown to the bottom of a well. He looks up and sees Kupper's mother and sister. They drop rocks onto him, knocking him unconscious. They then return to Ebru, who is already laid down in a grave. They bury her alive. Ebru shines a light using her phone and sees evil eye beads and other witchcraft items in the grave. She screams out for help, but suddenly starts choking. A snake enters her coffin, and Ebru tries to fend it off, but to no avail. The screen turns black, indicating that Ebru has become Stair's new vessel. The post credit scene reveals that Shaman was rescued from the well by villagers, but suffered amnesia due to the injuries. Moreover, no one has been able to locate Cumbra and her family. Their entire estate was sold before they fled the village. This film is said to be inspired by true events. This is Daniel CC Movie Channel. Stay safe and enjoy your day.